So today we're going to look at the DHCP process. We're going to consider the initial IP acquisition where the uh, DHCP client is just literally came onto the network looking for an IP address. Um, we're then going to consider what happens after it's already uh, got an IP address, it then needs to renew its lease. We're going to consider that. Then we're going to look at the client um, when it's trying to renew its IP address again when you've got a DHCP, multiple DHCP servers, when one of these servers goes down, we're going to consider the, those situations. So let's first have a look at the initial IP address acquisition. Okay, so we've got a standard environment here with a DHCP client on the left hand side. Uh, we've got a DHCP server on the right, two DHCP servers on the right there. So initially the DHCP client sends out a DHCP discover, uh, which is sent out in a broadcast type message to all the DHCP servers on the network. In this case, we've got two. Uh, those two DHCP servers reply also with a broadcast message of a DHCP offer. Now this DHCP offer contains a number of things, including uh, the source IP address of the DHCP server, an offered IP address, as well as a subnet mask, a length of a particular lease uh, and a number of options which can be configured by the administrator. Uh, these options include an um, IP address for a DNS server, uh, IP address for a default gateway, etc. etc. So the client then responds with a with another broadcast message of its own. This is called a DHCP request broadcast message. Um, it's broadcast to all the servers because it's it's decided to pick an IP address from the top server and the top DHCP server. So it broadcasts this uh, DHCP request with the IP address so that the other DHCP servers who have made offers know to withdraw um, or re retract their offer. Mm -hmm. So in this case, uh, the DHCP uh, server at the top is providing the IP address. That then sends over a DHCP ACK or a DHCP acknowledgement message type and the client at the stage is up and running with its IP address. Okay, so now we're going to consider the DHCP uh, IP lease renewal and what happens in the So first of all, we're going to look at the full process and then we're going to go into some, uh, some stages and some examples of, of the full process in action. So there's five stages basically. Um, the first stage is what's known as T1. So at T1, which is 50% into the lease, the client tries to initially renew its lease. So let's, for example, say that our lease time is 60 minutes. 30 minutes into its lease, it will try and renew at this time T1. Stage two, if there's no reply from the server at T1, the client tries again at T2, which is 87.5% um, into the lease. That's at T2. Um, at phase three, uh, if there's still no reply at the end of the lease, the client immediately re releases its IP address and starts the process again by sending out a DHCP discover. So it needs to immediately um, lose its IP address uh, because it just assumes it's the wrong IP address or another client may have that IP address. Um, stage four, which happens simultaneously to stage three, if it doesn't find its DHCP server, then it configures using the APIPA, um, which is the address range 169, um, etc. etc. Uh, it will keep this IP address then until it can find uh, another IP address from another DHCP server. Um, it does this every five minutes. So at the end of its lease, at 60 minutes into its 60 minute lease, it will do a DHCP discover. Then every five minutes after that, so five minutes after that, we're looking at another DHCP discover, which again is done in a broadcast. Okay, so examples of that in, in action. So again, here we've got a DHCP client on the left and a DHCP server uh, on the right. So client tries to renew its lease at 50% of the lease time. Um, as we said, this was T1. Um, DHCP request is put in um, and this is done via unicast. In this particular instance, the client is operational and running. So it's done in a unicast to the DHCP server. The DHCP server replies with a unicast type message again, which is the DHCP act, DHCP acknowledgement to com uh, confirm that it can continue using the IP address with an update of its lease time, etc. So this is a slightly different scenario here. We've got a client booting in this instance, um, and it's going to perform just very slightly different to the previous uh, slide, which was looking at the DHCP client when it was in operation. 
So this DHCP client here is going to broadcast the message, the DHCP request, which is the only difference really. Um, sends out the broadcast as opposed to the unicast. Again, the DHCP server sends back a unicast type message, the DHCP ACK. Okay, let's have a look uh, what happens when the client is operational and running along with its IP address, but for some reason the DHCP server is down. This could be pull the plug, damaged uh, DHCP server, or there could be um, some maintenance going on. So similar as before, DHCP request as before to send out a unicast because the client is operational. However, there's no response at this stage. So the client uh, tries initially at 50%, tries again at 87.5% uh, which again is T2. If it's unsuccessful the client releases its IP address at the end of the lease and it'll start again with a DHCP discover. So this is where the client boots and the DHCP server's down so let's have a look what happens here. So again we send out a broadcast message and a DHCP request if it's unsuccessful, um, the client will ping the default gateway, which was initially provided by the DHCP server. So we've got our uh, default gateway at the bottom there, and uh, we've got a, a ping from the client. So if we've got a successful ping, the client assumes it's on the correct network, and assumes that it's okay, and it just progresses using its IP address. But in a similar way to how it normally works at T1, it will try and renew and go through that process again. Okay, so we've got a scenario here where the client tries to boot um, and the DHCP server is down and also the default gateway is down. So again, we've got our uh, DHCP server and um, default gateway there. DHCP request put in, nothing happens. Ping put, put in from the client, um, no uh, reply from the default gateway. At this stage, the client assumes it's on a, a, a different network um, and gives up in terms of trying to Okay, so we've got another situation here where the client is moved to another subnet. So we've got a DHCP client, which in this case would probably be a laptop um, or some kind of mobile compu computing device. Uh, on the right here, we've got a DHCP server, which is on a different subnet. So this has uh, got a, um, a scope of IP addresses, which are actually um, different to the, uh, to the mobile computer we've got on the left. So again, uh, it tries to renew its lease at T1, uh, which is a DHCP request. Um, there's a DHCP NAC which comes now back from the DHCP server so this is a, a DHCP uh, not acknowledged um, this is where the server advises that it can't use that IP address uh, because it doesn't have it at this point um, again there's no choice of the client but it's got to start the DHCP discover process um, and what will happen in that particular instance there will probably just get a, a IP address from the DHCP server, uh, which has already given it its DHCP NAC previously. Okay, so let's have a look at DHCP fault tolerance and see what happens in a fault tolerant network when a client is trying to renew its lease. So we've got two DHCP servers here, and I've got a little box here which says scope, and this is going to show you the scope in a second. And we've got the DHCP client on the left with an IP address at the moment is uh, 192.168.10.14. Um, this DHCP, DHCP fault tolerance solution has got a 50-50 uh, a um, scope spread here. So on the top, um, there's a number of IP addresses and on the bottom, there's a number of IP addresses split in a 50-50 manner. Now Microsoft best practice suggests using an 80 to 20% um, manner so that one DHCP server has 80% of the IP addresses. But in this instance here, we're just going to show you a 50-51 just, um, just to try and make it nice and clear. Um, at the top, we've got um, an IP address range from 10.1 to 10.254 with the exclu exclusion range of 10.125 to 10.254. That means that scopes that, or the IP addresses which are being offered from the top DHCP server are 10.1 uh, to 10. Uh, one two four. Similarly, on the bottom, we've got uh, ten dot one to ten dot two five four uh, scope again. Obviously, these IP or these DHCP servers can't offer the same IP address, 
Um, so the one here has got an exclusion range from 10.1 to 10.124, which means it actually provides um, IP address range from uh, 10.125 through to 10.254. Okay, let's see what happens. So the uh, client on the left there has sent out a DHCP request. Everything's all good because that uh, top DHCP, DHCP server is up and running. Sends back a DHCP, DHCP ACK as we've seen previously and everything's hunky dory. Um, so we're going to have a little bit of a change here. Uh, we're going to have DHCP request from the client. Now we've got a problem because this uh, top server has been taken down for some maintenance. Um, it's not going to get any reply from it because it's down to maintenance. Um, so the only thing it can do is we'll go through the normal DHCP discovery process. Uh, in this instance, it's going to discover the scope at the bottom or the DHCP server at the bottom. Um, and it's going to find the first available IP address, which in this case is uh, 10.125. So that concludes our um, discussion around uh, DHCP renewal in terms of lease and in terms of uh, obtaining the IP address. For more information, um, have a look at TechNets that uh, link there takes you to everything that is DHCP.